Hey guys, this is Debarshi here, and today we're going to talk about iPad OS. This was announced at WWDC. Apple has finally listened to its pro users, at least their iPad pro users. Just a disclaimer, I have not tested the iPad OS beta yet. I refuse to do so until iPad OS officially is released. Apple's betas are just so buggy, and in my opinion, I don't think they represent the full user experience. I tried it once with Mac OS Mojave, never going to do it again. Since the original iPad release in 2010, Apple has been touting this device as a laptop replacement. This has become increasingly apparent with its iPad Pro line of devices. There are so many things that you can do on your PC very easily that you can't do as easily on an iPad. Importing footage into a video editing program, importing photos into Lightroom or Photoshop. Some of the biggest issues limiting the iPad have been a lack of mouse support, the inability to import files from a flash drive, as well as a lack of app support. There aren't too many developers creating apps competitive with desktop class apps. iPad OS and the criticism professionals have had for the limitations of iPad. The operating system now natively supports flash drives, meaning that you can import video footage or photos or any files. You can just start editing right off your drive. Apple is including a desktop class version of Safari on iPad OS. You get access to the desktop version of websites now. For me, when I upload my videos on YouTube, I always use a laptop. It's easier to upload on YouTube from a laptop than it is from a mobile device. My editing process and then just uploading it to YouTube is much more seamless on a laptop than it is on a mobile device. Having access on an iPad to a desktop version of the YouTube website makes the user experience similar to that of a laptop. If I just have my iPad with me, I can upload a video pretty easily knowing what to do. Now you have different gestures that you can use to cut, copy, and paste along with other common computing functions. I'm not gonna lie, this kind of took me a little bit back because Apple has always been known for its ease of use. In this specific case, I think it requires a lot of hand gymnastics and muscle memory for people to actually learn to utilize these gestures. I'm just curious to see how well this is going to pan out for Apple. Little things like a full-fledged file manager, the ability to use your iPad as a second display for your Mac, more control over videos and photos through the updated videos and photos app along with widgets. All all of these features allow for a better tablet experience while at the same time improving the chances of using your iPad as a suitable desktop replacement. I do have some of my own thoughts about iPadOS though and I still see some limitations that I think Apple can really surpass. Can the iPad be used as a suitable replacement for a computer? That is a big question. The answer is maybe. Maybe. Up until now, there have been major restrictions with using an iPad you haven't had to deal with when utilizing a laptop. Just because those restrictions have been lifted does not mean that everyone can utilize an iPad for every single task. We are still limited by the iPad's app ecosystem. All of the apps on the iPad thus far are created specifically for the mobile device in mind. There have been some initiatives to change this. Adobe is releasing a full-fledged desktop version of Photoshop on the iPad. There are still many professional applications, however, that are not supported on any iPad. Full desktop versions of the rest of Creative Cloud, besides just Photoshop or Final Cut Pro, which I use on a regular basis. Up until now, if you wanted to create apps on an iPad, you had to use a computer. You have had to use Xcode in order to develop the specific application. You connect your iPad to your computer, that app would be deployed.
deployed. It has not been easy to port Java code on an iPad. It's never been easy to run Python code on an iPad. There has never been a native version of Bash running on an iPad. That just begs the question, will there be enough app support for using the iPad as a development machine? This really depends on Apple and third-party developers. So Apple, get on it, create a full-fledged version of Xcode and allow us to develop our own iPad OS apps on our iPad. Integrate a full-fledged Bash terminal into your operating system. Third-party developers, they need to get on creating IDEs and compilers for the iPad. Oracle maybe port an entire version of the Java virtual machine and have it running on the iPad. Whether or not you can use the iPad as a computer replacement really depends on what you're doing. The market is such that most users who do traditional lightweight text editing and whatnot can probably adapt to iPad OS and use their iPad for most, if not all, everyday tasks. However, there are still some tasks that are far easier accomplished on a PC or a Mac. Video editing, software development, all of this is much easier accomplished on a full-fledged computer. iPads are powerful devices. They are only limited particularly by app support now thanks to Apple addressing limitations of their operating system. It remains to be seen whether or not there are more developers that come up with desktop class versions of popular applications for the iPad. But I think that the iPad has a very bright future. Ten years down the line, I see kids using iPads as their primary device instead of traditional laptops or desktops and whatnot. That's going to be it for this one, guys. Please do like, comment, and subscribe below. I'd like to know, would any of you use your iPad as a primary computer? Do you guys think that you can accomplish this given your workload?